A recent Stanford study takes a closer look at the climate impacts and health impacts of natural gas stoves, particularly when it comes to children. Dr. Lisa Patel with Stanford Children's Health joins me now. And Dr. Patel, first, can you talk about the effects of gas stoves on our environment? Uh, that's a great question, and I think that's what the study really contributed. We understand now that gas stoves are both a threat to our health inside our homes and out. And what the study found was that the amount of methane gas leaking from these stoves is the equivalent warming of 500,000 gas-powered cars. And we know that that warming is making climate change worse in terms of our heat waves and our wildfires here in California. And how does that translate into health issues? That's a great question. So, you know, we've long known that gas stoves are hazardous for indoor air quality because of the pollutants they release. But now that we know that methane gas is being leaked at the levels that they are from our gas stoves and making climate change worse, we've all experienced that really foul, terrible air that happens as a result of wildfires. Uh, we've all experienced the really hot days when we have worsening smog and ozone that makes things like asthma worse. So this is really a compounded problem in terms of gas stoves, both inside our homes and out. What are the differences when it comes to the impact on adults versus kids? That's a great question. So I'm a pediatrician, so I'll speak more, more, more to the, the kids than to the adults. But we do know in terms of the adults that it can worsen things like bronchitis and COPD. In children, I'm, I'm a pediatric hospitalist, so I care for children that come into the hospital because uh, they might have a pneumonia or bronchitis or they might be having an asthma exacerbation. Um, for these children, there are multiple things that can cause an asthma exacerbation. We know from the literature that children that live in homes with gas-powered stoves are 42% at higher risk to experience asthma symptoms. So this is a modifiable risk. And can you talk about the short-term effects on children? Also, what do we know about the long-term effects? Yeah, so in the short term, gas stoves are releasing nasty things. So they're releasing things like formaldehyde, carbon monoxide. Um, if for folks that are not familiar with carbon monoxide poisoning, I've also cared for children who've come in most often from boiler leaks in terms of carbon monoxide poisoning. But sometimes families will turn on their gas powered stoves um, or ovens to just heat their homes and they can end up in carbon monoxide poisoning from that as well. Uh, in short term, carbon monoxide can just cause headache or dizziness, and in le it, it can reach lethal doses inside the home if you breathe in too much of it. Uh, the other thing we worry about is formaldehyde, which is a carcinogen or a cancer-causing substance. And then we worry about the nitrogen oxides as well. These cause respiratory harm to children. And this one in particular is the one where we worry about um, asthma exacerbations. Mm. And some cities around the Bay Area have banned natural gas and new construction. Do you foresee that happening more in the future? And would you advise that from your perspective? Yeah, it's um, we've seen here in California, multiple cities of so San Francisco, San Jose, Berkeley have passed ordinances um, that are moving us in this transition towards all electric. So away from gas powered hookups and towards things like induction um, cooktops instead. And I, you know, we, I, as a, as a physician, um, I also leverage my voice in terms of thinking about health and policies. To me, these types of policies aren't just about our energy consumption, it's about protecting human health. So I think this, these transitions are important. Dr. Patel with Stanford Children's Health, thank you. Thank you so much.